So welcome to uh, PAN's webinar today on the notary exam. My name is John Renzel. I will be one of the three hosts today. Um, alongside me, we have fellow instructors, Mr. Brian Crocker and Ms. Crystal Ann Jones. Um, before we start, I'm going to take myself, actually, I'm going to keep myself on the screen because we're going to do some quick intros before we start. So like I said, my name's John Renzel. Um, I'm the digital content coordinator um, for PAN, and I'm also one of three instructors. I've been with PAN now for about nine years. Uh, December will be nine years, so coming close to that. I was a member service rep uh, for about a year or so, and then transitioned into an instructor. Did that for six, almost seven years, and then I've uh, been doing the digital content thing for PAN for a little over a year. So kind of doing a little bit of everything for PAN. Great company to work for. Um, but what I do is I handle our company's social medias, um, blogs, websites, and I do a little bit of the marketing. Uh, I also teach notary seminars uh, throughout the year, typically four times a year, unless I'm needed more. But that gives you a little bit of background on me. Um, you see in the picture here, here's myself and my family. So that's my wife, Cassie, uh, my stepson, Lucas, and uh, my daughter, Josephine. So that is a little bit about me. Before we start, uh, let's pass it over to Brian Crocker, and he's going to do his intro. I love that picture. <laughs> Thank I really you. Do. I love that picture. <laughs> well, my name is Brian Crocker, as John just said. Uh, as of next March, I will have been with the Pennsylvania Association of Notaries for, count them, 20 years. I'm very proud of my association with PAN. I'm currently... Uh, one of the two main instructors. I'm also heavily involved in instructional design. I love what I do. And I don't want to say too much about myself, but as you can see uh, on the screen, uh, there's a picture of uh, my wife and me at um, McConnell's Mills. It's a picture of my wife and my girls at a pop machine down at the Gateway Clipper. Uh, there's my daughter, Maggie, who just got married to my son-in-law, Jesse, uh, last month. And down below is an old picture from New York City when my wife and I went to see uh, one of the best, best Broadway shows we've ever seen called A Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder. So anyway, enough about me. Let's pass it on to Crystal Ann Jones. I'm clicking. There we go. I'm Crystal Ann Jones. I am an instructor with PAN. I have been with PAN for a little over two years as an instructor. Prior to working for PAN, I was an actress for about 20 years. I lived in Saudi Arabia and I was a teacher over there. I also spent some time in Beijing, China. I did voiceovers in English for Chinese soap operas and movies. And I have cats. I'm a keeper of cats. I would show you one right now, but they're all sleeping on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. thank you for joining us today. Perfect. Awesome. So what we're going to do here is typically whenever we're presenting, we keep ourselves off the camera so you can focus on the presentation. And then we'll pop back on after the presentation when we uh, answer uh, your questions. I'm going to take myself off the screen here. So before we start, I just want to let you know that your audio, again, will be muted for the duration of today's presentation. Um, it just helps control with the background noise. Um, you will have the opportunity to ask your questions by utilizing the chat box. You will see that icon on the toolbar. Um, and if you could do me the favor, just please hold on to your questions until after the presentation is complete. We will have plenty of time to answer your questions before we head out of here today. So before we start, um, let's do a quick icebreaker. It's always a good way to loosen up the room a little bit. It's fun to do these. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to launch a poll question. And there's three questions on here. So you might need to scroll down a little bit to see all three. But these are fun ones. Um, Take a few moments and answer these, and then we'll take a look at the results. And now these um, are anonymous, so I don't know who votes for what, so don't be shy. Um, people prefer to do icebreakers and over the traditional questions and introductions, and 60% of people actually feel more comfortable participating in a meeting after an icebreaker, so it's fun to do these. And 75% uh, of people said icebreaker questions help them build relationships with new people. So a couple of fun facts about icebreakers. 
We'll give about another 15 seconds. We'll give it a full minute just to give everybody the opportunity to vote. And then I'll end the poll and we'll share the results. We'll see what we're thinking. All right. Well, that is our full minute. So let's end the poll. Let's go ahead and share the results. So we have, would you rather live the rest of your life in? We have the Arctic got 54% of the vote, um, 13 people. And the Sahara Desert was 46%. I didn't have the opportunity to vote for this, but if I was voting, I would have been with the Arctic. Um, I am always hot. I can't help it. So <laughs> I would have loved to have been in the Arctic. Uh, no lying. Are you wearing pajamas right now? We had one person say they are. And then the majority said no. Um, I'm a little bit of a mix. I'm wearing the shorts I slept in, but my shirt is more uh, more professional. So <laughs> I'm professional up top. Um, do you multitask when attending a meeting online? Uh, we had a good bit of people say yes. Uh, 19, that's 79% of the room say yes. And 21% of the people said no. Um, I would say I fall, I would say yes. It depends on the meeting. Um, it just depends on how focused I am, how uh, it affects me. So I would say I would probably fall under yes as well. So thanks for participating. I stopped sharing. So that should be off your screen. Now, if not, just click on the red X on top of that poll and it will be off your screen. All right. So let's start with the actual presentation. So who's required to take the notary exam? Well, anybody who does not hold a commission in this Commonwealth. So that means new notaries and notaries with expired commissions. <clears throat> what can the exam cover? Anything described by the PA notary law, RELONA. So RELONA stands for the Revised Uniform Law on Notarial Acts. Pearson View is the only company that is authorized by the Pennsylvania Department of State to administer the exam. You will receive Pearson View's approval to test notice email within four to six weeks once your notary application is sent to and accepted by the Department of State. In order to schedule an exam, you will need to create a Pearson View account. So you will do this by providing your first name, your last name, and the candidate ID. All this information is emailed to you um, from Pearson View. When you get the email from them, it will be in there. So you could take the exam one of two ways. You could take it either in person or online, or what Pearson View calls it is on view. So if you see that, that's what that means, online. For the in-person exam, um, this, does, this is done at a Pearson View testing center. And no personal items can be taken into the testing room during your in-person exam. So this means purses, book bags, phones, wallets, notebooks or notes, watches. None of those things can be taken in with you. With the online exam, you get one attempt only. If you would fail, you would need to take the in-person exam when you reschedule. <clears throat> So I let my commission lapse on purpose, and then I took the exam online. I did this so I could write out of my experience and post it to our blog. So if you're getting ready to schedule your exam, and um, I would highly recommend reading about my experience. Um, this would give you a better idea on whether or not the online exam is for you. Um, Brian and Crystal Ann went ahead and in the chat box, they shared a link to the actual blog article. So you could always read up on that. But what I'll do is give you a little Cliff Notes version of my experience. Um, I tested the equipment the night before. So that was Pearson View's recommendation. And that was very important, in my opinion. If I didn't do that, I don't think I would have been able to do this. Um, I downloaded the OnView program that was needed to run the system test in the exam. Um, the microphone and camera must be working. 30-minute check-in before the exam start time. And you must close all your programs running in the background of your computer. So that's other internet browsers, um, emails, your Teams, anything running in the background needs to be shut down. 
Uh, upload photos showing your testing space at home or where you're testing. So the front, back, left, right of your computer and your desk, and then photos of your ID and a headshot needed to be provided. Uh, the exam is monitored by a VIEW certified proctor via webcam and microphone. Um, you must read and acknowledge a disclaimer that you will not cheat, read, uh, read the questions aloud, and that I would not move away from the camera. Uh, I took the exam and I was invited to take a survey afterwards. And then I got my results emailed to me um, about five minutes after I took the exam. So that was my experience and everybody's could differ, but that's how mine went. So here are my recommendations for the online exam. You need to be tech savvy. If you're unfamiliar with disabling ad blockers or firewalls, or you don't know what those mean, I would say the online exam is not for you. You need to do the exam on a personal computer with a camera and mic. I don't recommend a work computer because those are typically uh, downloaded with firewalls and certain websites that are blocked. You can run into issues. You need to be able to test your equipment beforehand. I really feel this is crucial. If you cannot do this step, don't take the online exam. So you're allotted 60 minutes for the exam. And there are 30 multiple choice questions. Each question has only three potential answers. The exam costs $65 per exam. And you pay this at the time you schedule your exam. The cost of the exam is not included in any of PAN's membership packages. So you need two forms of signature bearing ID to schedule. One ID must have a photograph and a signature. An ID from this list would be suitable. Um, I'm going to give you, because there's a bunch of stuff on the screen here. Take a moment to look these over, and then I'll move on. All right, so the second ID, the second ID must have a signature and be in English. So examples of this could be a U.S. Social Security card, a debit card, or any form of ID that was on the previous slide we just looked at. Now, what we're looking at on the screen here is an example of a common question that we get at PAN regarding the applicant's name. So in this example, uh, the customer, they applied as Andrew J. Sample, but their ID has Andrew Jason Sample. Do they need to update their name? The answer is no. Pearson View does not look at the middle names or initials, and Pearson View is not allowing you to apply with first initial, middle name, last name. One of PAN's uh, member service representative supervisors asked us to specific, uh, specifically cover this scenario that you see on the screen here during this webinar. She mentioned that the member service team is getting questions on this quite often. So the scenario is, if the first name has two or more initials, the initials in the registration name much, must be used on both IDs and on the test center schedule. So what this means is, if you're registering and applying with a name, maybe BB King, that's what needs to be on the ID. That's your legal name. That's great. And that works. But it cannot say on your ID, Bradley B King or B King or BD King. It needs to show exactly the name that you applied and registered as. So to pass the exam, you need to obtain a scaled score of 75 or higher. The in-person exam taker should receive the results before leaving the testing center. They should show you, uh, they'll hand it to you, typically face down. To see your results for the online exam, you will need to either sign into your Pearson View account after the exam, or you wait for the email, whatever you prefer. Now, if you would fail the exam, you would need to wait 24 hours and then register again. And remember, it's $65 per exam. So PAN offers an online test prep tutorial to help you study and get ready for the exam. When you take education through PAN, you will receive this email a week after the seminar. 
giving you the opportunity to take the test prep course. It will be an overview of the seminar you took and a practice exam at the end. You could take that uh, course as many times as you like. It's the same course with the same questions and answers, however. Just keep that in mind. Now, if you are a PAN member, you could also access this overview course um, under the member, uh, member portal. So just click on tutorials under member resources, and then you'll scroll down. There's a bunch of tutorials you, you have access to. Just scroll down until you see notary exam test prep, and you would click on it. So in summary, anyone without an active notary commission needs to take the exam. The exam can be done in person or online. Online can only be done once. If you're not tech savvy, we would highly recommend taking the in-person exam. We can't stress that enough. And then take advantage of our test prep tutorial. Uh, we've had a lot of people talk highly of it. Um, it's an advantage if you take education through PAN or you're, if you're a PAN member. So take advantage and take it maybe when you receive it and take it the day before. It doesn't hurt to take it twice um, to keep your uh, mind focused on that exam. So that's our presentation. We're going to pop on the screen now and we will open the room for questions. Oh, thank you, John. Great job, by the way. Thank you. Thank well you. Done. So what happened to this? I have a question from Hanal. If using a driver's license, does it have to be a Pennsylvania one? Uh, the answer is no. It does not need to be a Pennsylvania driver's license. Awesome. That was an easy one. Yeah. That's why I, I took it. I'm like, I'm taking the first one. <laughs> <laughs> there is a lot of people that worry about the exam, especially when we're in class. It seems like we got a lot of questions about that. So um, just, you know, try to be relaxed. That's my recommendation. Study. Definitely read the notary law. Um, that is something that I can't stress enough. Read the notary law. I would say read it at least once or twice. Because when we you take education through PAN, we don't go over every aspect of the notary law. So it's important to know the notary law because they can ask you a question on it since that's, um, you know, part of the law. I'll, I'll grab the next question, if that's okay. okay. So at the testing location, are there lockers for valuables, like such as handbags and whatnot? When I took my test, there were lockers. In fact, they made me take everything I had on me and put it in a locked locker. I needed to put my cell phone in there. I think I had like a little sweater, a couple other things on me, and I was forced to put it in a locker and lock it up. Um, that's my experience with my testing center. I don't know um, if anybody, if, if every testing center is the same though. So. I, uh, I mean, if you read the, if you read the, the handout, it says that it, it indicates that there isn't a place to put it. And they're not responsible for security. So, I mean, I guess that would be situational, uh, which yeah. testing center you go to. For example, um, I had to, I needed to take a exam through Pearson View. So I did the online exam for notary, but before that I had another professional exam I needed to take. And I did it in person at uh, Youngstown University. I went and same situation as Crystal Wynn. They had a locker. But I do agree it would be situational, make sure. But I had to, like she said, lock uh, keys, phone, my watch. Um, and they asked me, do you have any jewelry? Like, so be careful. I think every testing center is going to be a little bit different. If you have something valuable, I recommend leaving it at home that day. I had somebody say they inspected their glasses. What? <laughs> to make sure they weren't Google glasses, I guess. I, oh, like, Wow. wow. I don't know if that's going to happen everywhere, but that was uh, an experience that I had from somebody who talked to me. Um, are the questions situational notary questions for the exam? Um, from my experience, I can't tell you what's on there because you do sign a, like a disclaimer um, that you're not going to share what's on there. But I'm just going to tell you they were more like um, geared towards dates, fees, times, it's more administrative things. Um, but I would focus on, like I said, the notary law. If you study the, the notary law itself, you go over our practice exam. And if you've taken PAN education, go through the resources we provide you from our education. 
I think you're going to be okay. Can never guarantee it, but you're going to be well ahead of others, in my opinion. And Kim asked, my commission expires 923.23. Is the test the same for me? Here's the thing, Kim. Uh, that's still a future date. If your application and supporting documents make their way to the state and get there before your commission expires, then you will not be required to take the exam. Uh, if, you're, if your application and supporting documents make their way to the state um, after your commission expires, even by one day, you will, will be required to take the exam. And yes, the exam is the same for you as well. If you hurry, you might be able to make it in without needing to take the exam again. So I recommend, you know, just being quick with getting your stuff in. Absolutely, Kim. If you're a PAN member, what I would recommend is contact the member service here today um, to see where you're at in the process. If you haven't started yet, they can get you situated and let you know time frames because that's so important to get, like Brian said, the documents to the state before you expire. That is the key. And I will grab the next question. Um, any idea of when the next test date will be in Pennsylvania? So it really depends on what area you live in. When you get that email from Pearson View, you put in what area, you know, like your zip code or what area you're in, and it'll pull up a whole bunch of different testing locations. So for me, I'm in the Pittsburgh area. I believe there were options like every day of the week in different places around Pittsburgh. So it really depends on where you live. And for the online, it's going to depend on the availability of their proctors. Um, but there was a big range of dates that I had available and times as well. Um, I could have even taken it at night from what I remember. Um, yeah. So just look it over and find, you know, what's best for you. Um more of a comment here. Uh, it says, my plan is to study the workbooks from the pre-licensures class and the everyday notary issue class and take the practice exam multiple times until I'm ready. Great strategy. I mean, once and for, you know, if you take PAN education, uh, I feel that's a great starting point in person or Zoom online, whichever. They're kind of all the same, but I like some form of either in person or Zoom because you get to ask your questions. It's more involved. So that's my recommendation. So you're good there. The Everyday Notaries Challenges class is a great tool um, for day-to-day -day notarizations, but it's some exam prep in there too. So great start there. And then doing that practice exam. And the last thing you left off of there is something, I think it's probably the most important, reading the notary law. Um, I'm going to say that probably more times today, but read it. It's in the back of the book um, that you talk. We could also share the link in the chat box to the notary law. Um, read it. Be comfortable with it because they can quiz you on anything on that, uh, that notary law. All right. And let's see. Brooke says, hello, everyone. I did, if I decide to take the test in person, is there a list of Pearson View location? And Bazia answers yes on the Pearson View website, and I actually uh, posted the link to that website, which is specific to Pennsylvania, the Pennsylvania notary exam. So again, it'll be really, as, as Chris Land said before, it'll be really apparent when you get the uh, approval to test and you sign on to your account for the first time and you'll use the drop down to pick locations and times. It looks like Crystal Ann also posted the link to the law that John mentioned. Yeah, that's the current notary law, Rulona Revised Uniform Law on Notarial Acts. And I was looking for that, so I'm not sure if somebody answered the most recent question um, from Christine. Did somebody get that? I did not, and I pronounced uh, uh, Basha's name wrong. I apologize, Basha. So... Yes, I didn't. No one answered Christine's. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, so I'm taking my test soon and I live very close to Delaware. So that Pearson View location is closer to me than the one that is located in Pennsylvania. Um, so the, I'm, I'm thinking the question is, can she take the test in Delaware? instead of Pennsylvania? I, I'm, I'm wondering if that's a question. I don't know if that's something that they make available. Um, John or Brian, are you aware 
if from from past experience i believe from reading other things the answer is yes although i i would check to make sure that that is an option when you uh sign up that's my thing when you type it in they're gonna only populate locations that can um administer that exam mm -hmm. so if it pops up and i would say you're okay 100 percent it doesn't say anything in the in the manual, but I, I think from reading before when we were starting to do all this in 2017, it said you could take the test in other states. But again, yeah, I think John's right for sure. Awesome. Yeah, and Crystal, and thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. You're welcome. We're open, we're open to new questions. The chat box is yours. Yeah. And um yeah, I just did a search recently on um, kind of what people were searching on Google for notaries. And one of the biggest things I noticed, like a trend, probably out of the top 10 things people were searching for, a handful of it was like, is the notary test hard? Um, will I pass on the first try? People are concerned about that notary exam. And I can't stress enough, if you prepare for it, um, you do what we've been saying today, um, you're going to go in there. And you're going to feel very confident. And I'm, my assumption is going to be that you're going to, you know, you're going to pass and you're going to do very well. When I teach the everyday notary challenges class, one of the things I actually do for those people, because they get that extra time to do test prep, as I say, take my card and send me an email after you've taken the exam. I'm, I'm not asking you to give me any answers because you're not allowed, but I want to know what your experience was like. And, and the feedback I'm, I'm getting is overwhelmingly positive, as John said, that people felt confident when they went in, they felt prepared, and most people give me their score or at least tell me that they passed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people will be, I, I kind of do the same deal, Brian, I'm sure Crystal Ann does the same thing. And like, we get that email and they're like, oh, you know, they give you an hour to take it. I needed 15 minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, and I tell people, don't rush through it. If they, you know, if you have an hour, take as long as you need. Um, recommendations is read the question twice, read all of the potential answers. Don't just stop at, you know, if whether it's A, B or C, don't stop at A or B, read A, B and C, read them over, take your time. But my guess is you're not going to need that full hour. It's 30 questions that you're, that you're doing. Um, it, you'll be okay. Right. Again, we're coming up on 1130 uh, and there hasn't been a question in a little while. So if, if Additional questions don't come in. We will wrap up and we will close uh, the Zoom session. But again, we're here if you need us uh, for another half hour, but we're not going to stay if there aren't any questions. So what I am doing, did I spell everything right there? Fan instructors. Yeah. yeah. Um. Just in case, whenever this does, we do close shop and you think of a question later, you are more than welcome to email our pan instructors email box um all three of us get these emails so you might get one response two sometimes three depending on how quickly we answer if we're all reading at the same time but uh don't hesitate to email us um now i will say we are on the road from time to time teaching seminars so if you need an instant response maybe it's something that's very time sensitive contact customer service that's important. But if you have a question and you're okay with waiting for a response, you know, for a little bit, don't hesitate to email us. Is this your question, John? I believe so. Where are we at here? Uh, where can you find the notary law on PAN's website? And uh, Crystal Ann did us the favor. Very convenient. Um, if you click on that link that Crystal Ann just posted in the chat box, it says Rolona. Go ahead and bookmark that in your um, internet browser. That is the notary law. Um, also, so, if you if you want a searchable version, if you Google Pennsylvania Title 57, uh, I use it all the time, but it brings it up for you. And the different sections of the law are highlighted so you can click and it'll take you right to that section. But uh, that's the one that I use, actually. But the, uh, yeah, that's the that's the quote unquote paper version that that Crystal Ann put in there. So before, if you do, like if we're getting ready to close shop here soon, um, if there's a topic that you'd like to see in the future for a webinar, because we're always looking for ideas on what to do on webinars before you leave today, throw it in the chat box, you know, of what webinar topic you'd like to see next. 
because uh, we've done no notary trivia before. We've done ones on on remote online notarization. And keep in mind, if you're new to PAN, you're new to this, our YouTube page has a library of all of our prior webinars. Um, so if you haven't seen them, give us a like and a follow on our YouTube page. I highly recommend following our Facebook or our LinkedIn, um, all of our social medias, because that's where we're posting did you knows and how to videos and tutorials. There's so much out there um, that we try to give you resources as much as we can. And Dolores asks, is that title 57 or 67? Uh, the answer is it's 57 like Heinz 57. I actually did the search right now. And I'm going to go ahead and paste that link into the chat box if I can get what I was already going to post in there out. So there is the link that I got to get to title 57. You can bookmark that in it. It's chapter three, revised uniform law on notarial acts. So same darn thing. Uh, I always go there because I my feeling is if they were to update something, which I don't think they are because it needs to be amended to be updated. Um, that's where I go. Great. Now, I don't know if this is a question, but most common questions for new notaries? No, so that? that is a uh, webinar topic idea. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Sarah, Sarah does have a question if you want to handle that. Okay, thank you. Um, so Just so I understand, you need to take an exam if you do not have an active commission. That is correct. So if you are going to be a new notary, like you've never been a Pennsylvania notary before, you need to take an exam. Or if your commission has expired, then you'll need to take the exam. So you are correct. Awesome. And what I'm doing here is I just shared our YouTube page um, just so it's out there. Because if some people are new, you might not realize what's out there. And we have tons of webinars, like I said, um, um, they were fun and interactive ones that we've done in the past. We've done ones um, on, uh, like I said, electronic and remote, because a lot of people had questions on that about the differences. So if you have questions on those topics, definitely check that out as well. And also, John talked earlier about uh, the test prep tutorial, which if you take one of our classes, you get a week after. Uh, but if you are a PAN member, you can access that tutorial, as John said, during presentation uh, in the member portal. And I once again posted the link to the member portal. All you need to do is use your username, which is your PAN number and your password to sign in. This, uh, this recording will be uploaded to YouTube later next week. Um, you will see in the description, all the links that we've provided today will be in that description as well. So if you go back to watch this or you want to refer somebody to it, they'll have all the links that associated today in there. So they're not missing anything as well. How long is the test to become a notary for first time? Um, so they allot you 60 minutes. They give you 60 minutes to finish that exam. Um, it's going to depend on the individual if you need that full 60. Uh, I mean, now granted, I am a PAN instructor, so I've been doing notary for a little bit. When I took it, because I let mine expire, it took me 10 or 15 minutes. Um, and that was with me reading the questions twice and just slowly taking my time, making sure um, that I wasn't rushing through it. So they give you definitely enough time. Uh, and you have the option to skip a question and come back to it. So maybe you're like, you're unsure about it and you just don't want to decide right then and there. You can skip. And then it flags it for you. And then at the end, it, you go back to that question. And Dolores, just to make your, put your mind at ease, the, the, the exam is only 30 questions long. It is multiple choice. And each question only has three potential answers. And only one of those answers is correct. So you're not going to have, you know, A, B, C, D, and D is, you know, A and B, but not C. It is right. one, one correct answer. That's it. Yeah. 
all of the above, some of the above, half of the above, <laughs> none of the above. It's, it's never not like, like that. Never like those exams. It's, it's one of the more straightforward exams I've taken because the other one that I did through Pearson View was for um something marketing related. And unfortunately, I had, there was five potential answers and they were kind of like they said, it's A, B, A, B, and C. Like it was very confusing. The notary exam is very straightforward. It's either A, B, or C. It's one of them. So yeah, I like it a lot. Just to let you know, the right answer is there. It it is. <laughs> so if there are no other questions, uh, we can wrap up and say, have a great day and good luck on the exam. What do you think, guys? I agree. Yeah, she said being uh, being English is my second language. I wanted to get ready. Thank you, gracias. No, you are welcome. Absolutely. That's what we're here for. Um, I did write down the uh, the idea for the next webinar, maybe, you know, common questions for the new notary. That could be a good topic. I think um, that would do well. So thank you for that suggestion. Thanks for being here, everybody. Um, We'll see you next time, hopefully. That's our goal. Um, we'll keep a lookout on our social medias and notary notes. That's where we advertise these. Um, so be on the lookout, but stay safe, stay healthy, and um, enjoy your weekend. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>